Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 4, Episodes World of Remnant, Faunus, and Episode 5. Okay. I thought we'd be doing two episodes this week, but I keep forgetting that they're now apparently, if they keep this up, they're going to do a World of Remnant, then an episode. That's a good way to stretch out the season and still give the viewers more information on the world. Also, we finally get a more in-depth look at Faunus and get more stuff explained to us outside of the tidbits other people have gotten from the Rooster Teeth's Twitter and the creators and stuff like that on Twitter. Yes, so we now have it officially. Faunus have one animalistic trait. They are compatible with humans, and they are compatible with each other, which should be obvious, but we did not have a full explanation before that they were a full, complete reproductive species, you know, for all we knew, they could have been the result of some experiment to fight the Grimm. But now it is canon that they are a fully sentient organic species. And I like how Crow put it biologically. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm going to dance around that a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he probably did dance around that a little bit. <laughs> uh... Also, meet the parents. <laughs> Always awkward, especially when it looks like you're the equivalent of the princess of menagerie. <laughs> I also like, I don't like you. <laughs> At least the father is willing to say it straight to son's face. Mm -hmm. And I like how the mother's like, I like him. <laughs> Blake's just like, ugh. <laughs> also the classic line of, um, he kind of followed me home. <laughs> especially coming from a cat. Mm -hmm. Also, they're taking advantage of the fact that we can now see Blake's ears. And they're doing the classic stuff that cat ears do with emotions. Yes, very expressive. And also, they look better to me in this episode than they did when she first revealed them by tossing her ribbon on the ship. Then they looked smaller and more rounded. I guess she was still kind of used to holding them down. Mm. And speaking of details like that... I noticed that they added some more tufts of hair to Sun's tail. Because before, in the old version, it was just a solid line. Or basically, you know, just the solid tail, no little tufts of hair or anything. Yes, so we are getting more detail there. Also, Mother wears earrings in those cat ears. That I don't know that those would have been the ones I would have picked to pierce. Because there's usually a little flap right there in that section where you're piercing, and I wouldn't think that would be the best area to pierce. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see any ears on the father so i'm wondering where is he straight human or is he a faunus considering he's a member of the faunus white fang and all this other stuff where is his trait or is it just the fact that he kind of looks like a male lion <laughs> <laughs> yeah he doesn't have ears and we have not seen a tail he could have retractable claws which you would not see until he went to fight mm -hmm. uh he does have a bit more hair than one would expect, though it is in line with what is possible for a human. But also with what we learned in the World of Remnant episode, human plus faunus, the offspring usually has the characteristic of the faunus. Where faunus and faunus, the offspring could have any faunus characteristic. Only if it was a different faunus. Yes, if it was a different type of faunus. Yep. So... That points to Blake's father either being fully human or some type of feline faunus, since she very clearly takes after her mother. Mm -hmm. Just so many great little things in, ep in this episode, all the little touches. and Though I think this is mostly rendering budget, it felt crowded, but not as crowded as Sun was saying it felt to him. Because the way he was describing it, it felt like he was like bumping into people a lot, and he felt like he wasn't as... No, a sardine can, but there was more space between people than how I would think of someone describing how Sun was describing what was going on. We would need to look back at scenes of Sun and Blake in Veil vale to see relative crowding. But when you think about that that's the majority of the faunus, also in what looks like a small market town as mm -hmm. opposed to something more technologically advanced. Though... There's also the thing that fact that Sun comes from a desert. There's probably large areas where there are no people. So he's probably used to that. 
except that he's already spent time in Vale, so he's had a chance to be exposed to more metropolitan, urban, crowded areas. Well, maybe he still felt crowded there, and this just felt even more crowded, because there is a slightly more dense population visually here than there was in Vale. Yes. And I like how first thing Ember sees when they get off the boat on the show is, Cat boy! <laughs> Well, so often it's cat girl, and there were actually technically several, but only one in the correct age group for me to go, oh, cat boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I didn't even see that. I was just seeing that girl, that girl. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> well, it's so stereotypical. Most often it's a cat girl. You very rarely have cat boys. It's one of the things I like about that one web comic that I've been reading, it gets a bit etchy, but the main character is a cat boy. Mm. Though I did actually notice a couple of lizards. Yes, yeah, several lizards. Mm -hmm. And mostly without a tail, but the scalings up here and small horns. I didn't see a lot of actual lizard tails. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is there's no hard and fast rule that we've been told for what the singular trait is. Crow's uh, description in the World of Remnant video just says that there's a variety. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Crow's description, I love the, I actually saw a faunus lizard regrow his tail before. There's no amount of drink that's going to make you forget that. <laughs> oh, and back to those World of Remnant things, I just love the art style they're using for them. It's just so nice and they do it so well. And it's just so visually pleasing to watch it. Yes, because they keep it a completely different style from the main series, but it doesn't feel like a budget cut. It's just a highly stylized version, like if you were reading the story on an ancient scroll. Mm -hmm. That just happens to be magically animated. Mm -hmm. Though I've noticed something in the main show's art style that they're doing. They don't seem to be giving backgrounds and buildings and items outlines compared to the characters which actually have outlines on them. So sometimes it kind of throws me a little bit when we switch to a wider shot and the characters stand out more than I expect them to or somehow they blend in more because we're zoomed out so far that the outlines around the characters aren't as distinguished if the camera's zoomed in more. So sometimes that throws me a little bit. Like specifically this one scene where we're coming up on her house and they're going up the steps. It didn't feel like they had much of an outline at all when they were going up the steps so they didn't stand out as much from that background. It is interesting because in art and animation, we're used to seeing those outlines. Mm -hmm. The only show that comes to mind offhand that truly did away with them was Samurai Jack because he had no outlines. Mm -hmm. And there's no outlines in Ladybug either. That's CG. I think of it differently. Ah, well, Ruby is also CG, but they do such a good job of mimicking a 2D art style. Yeah, pay attention to this Japan. This is a good way to mimic a 2D art style. You don't have to drop frame rate to make it look like 2D. <laughs> Sorry, it's a big problem of mine. It's like, that's not how you make it blint. Uh. <laughs> so do you have any nitpicks of this 12 minute long episode? Because there's not really much to nitpick in the World of Remnant episodes. <laughs> no, there really isn't. And we spent almost the entire episode on Blake, which is fine. And those white fang jerks trying to pass themselves off as being peaceable. Oh, yeah. They were doing a terrible job. Very, very much so. And, you know, speaking all calm and monk-like, like, yeah, I'm not buying this at all. And they reminded me so much of those two twins, I think they were, in Yu-Gi-Oh! When they had that maze. Oh, the Paradox Brothers. Yeah, it reminded me so much of those two. Like, yeah. I also like their design by the fact that one has a tail and one has the ears. And I think they're both foxes. It's a nice contrast because the name on one, I believe it had Fenrix in it, which is a type of fox. Hmm. And I didn't quite catch the name of the other because I was too focused on the fact that Adam's last name was Tauros. I'm like, oh, I didn't really get the impression that he was a bull type. You didn't see the horns? I was too focused on he's crazy. Ah. <laughs> that should go on a t-shirt. I was too focused on he was crazy. <laughs> it's like now available through our store. 
We have our store. We will now. <laughs> uh, and as if we didn't already mistrust these guys from this episode, we would mistrust them from the opener because they're both in it. Mm -hmm. And they're featured on the villain side. Yep. And right in front of Adam. <laughs> so, yeah. And you don't even need to give us that subtle hint at the end with them walking down the stairs of like, we should tell him. <laughs> That was completely unnecessary. Completely and utterly. So there's a nitpick. That was unnecessary. It was so obvious. Yes, but it did give us more about their personalities. It did, but they could have done something similar without naming names. Mm -hmm. I ex actually expected them to leave it at just, this is interesting, and then cut after that to make us still wonder, like, they're obviously bad guys, but are they bad guys for the guy who's on the island who's the current leader or are they working with adam because that would have been a nice thing it's like the entire time you question whether or not they're they're definitely evil but who are they evil for <laughs> true but then you have all of that and then you cut back to the bar and... i feel so sorry for that barmaid <laughs> yeah i mean first you have to wait on crow then you see raven disappear and then mr i'm so creepy i don't want to be within if I can see you, I'm running. <laughs> Every time I see him, I just want to stab him in the face repeatedly. That was my first reaction for someone that crazy. Like, either run or most likely <laughs> kill it with fire. Yes. At the very least, tase it and then start running. Yeah. <laughs> I love her calling him it. He's not sane. <laughs> Also, I think the barmaid didn't actually like Crow, so that wasn't the downer for her. The downer for her was the after the sister left was like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, and I know she liked Crow because she got him top shelf when Raven only paid for bottom. Mm -hmm. Obviously flirting. Mm -hmm. But still, it's Crow. Okay, I like Crow and everything, but come on. He's a haggard drunk who is also a womanizer. That's, that's still hard to deal with. Uh, I still God, love... I just said all of that and I still like him. What does he ring a bell? <laughs> I still love the line of, and it, I can't remember exactly how it goes, but small lines of, and then I was defeated by the uh, bar wench's waist or something. Uh, I won't get it exactly right either, but I'll get closer than Lux. And then I was defeated by the skirt length of the improprietus. Ah. <laughs> uh... I also love how they give us little tidbits of exposition while Blake and Sun are walking through the town. That was really nice. They were basically telling us about how the world works and how she works. Even though I knew it was coming, I liked the reveal of which house was hers. And Sun's reaction was priceless. I slipped in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except for the fact that she doesn't really like you. Trust me, Sun. She's just not that into you. <laughs> So, what else do you have for us? <laughs> uh, me? <laughs> well, you usually have more. Yes. I like the little detail of Sun pouring the tea with his tail. Mm -hmm. Poor guy. Yes. I'm like, Sun, it was so easy to backtrack from that. Because you said it far too casually. You just rein yourself in a little bit and go... What I meant, sir, is that your daughter is a very skilled fighter. <laughs> yeah. Because how you said it sounded like we could be talking about something other than fighting. And you are going to get your head pounded in by her father one of these days. I'm just waiting for it. Or he's going to take one of those wonderful opportunities after a fight to just whack him over the back of the head and go, it was my fault. <laughs> mm -hmm. But there's always a perfect opportunity just after a fight. <clears throat> the bad guys did it. <laughs> Don't look at me. Somebody's throwing rocks. <laughs> Do this. What is this? Some sort of peasant game? <laughs> <laughs> One of our favorite movies, Zipper's New Groove. If you haven't watched it, go out and watch it now. Please. Skip the sequel and the TV series. Trust us. Now back to Ruby. <laughs> yes, and the place was also very temple-like going to Blake's home and that resounding gong noise, but apparently in... Uh, Menagerie 1 does not have servants, considering that the lady of the household answered the door. Well, he is only the chieftain. I don't think chieftains get many servants. Well, this could be reflective of the society as a whole, considering that humans 
mm. tended to put faunas in secondary service work. Manual labor, mm -hmm. stuff they really didn't want to do. Yeah. So I don't know that they would necessarily employ servants. Mm. Good point. Not them personally, but the kingdom as a whole. Mm -hmm. Not that it's any type of paradise, even for Faunus, because we do see that child baker. Mm. And so it was nice enough to give them credits mm -hmm. or whatever. I can't remember, like Oolong or something like that. I can't remember what the currency is called in Ruby. Doesn't really matter. Funds change hands. Mm -hmm. So what are your final thoughts? Really like the world of Remnant. It was about time that we focused more on the Faunus because there's been a lot of world building, a lot of stuff about Grimm, a lot of stuff about the kingdoms, a lot of stuff about dust. But we hadn't really talked about Faunus and we've had Faunus around since the start of the series. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was a really nice bit of information we got from that World of Remnant episode. I really enjoyed the fact that we got more info on the Faunus because I've always been kind of curious about them. I'm more interested in why two sets of ears and does that mean her hearing is exceptionally good? Hmm. I also liked the whole episode. <laughs> Uh, this wasn't the kind of awkward that makes me feel awkward. It's just the kind of awkward that goes, ooh. Because <laughs> it's the subtle kind of awkward that makes me wince during the episode. It's the kind of awkward like, I can understand that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was nice timing-wise. We have a World of Remnant episode about Faunus, and then we have an episode that takes place almost entirely within the Faunus Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And they give us an explanation of where the Faunus Kingdom came from and how it came to be and how it's basically a, um, let's see. Um, I was going to say Indian Reservation. Yeah. I was also saying that it's a false gift. It was a gift to shut them up, as Sun put it. <laughs> mm hmm <sighs> But I like the episode and I can't wait till we get to see two more. <laughs> and this has been our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 4, World of Remnant, Faunus, and episode 5. If you enjoyed this, please click the subscribe button. If you want to see more of Lux's art, you can find it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, and Twitter. Would you like to help support Lux? He has a Patreon and a coffee account. He also does commissions. See links below and to check for commission availability.